what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Over the past couple weeks, or like the last week or so, Reckless has been uh, streaming a lot. He's been talking about a lot of different things and stories that have happened over the past uh, like year or so. And it's made for a lot of stories. It's made for a lot of things to talk about that have been kind of piling up and stacking up. And over the past couple weeks, we've kind of hit a roadblock in terms of stories about Reckless, about K Corp, all this stuff. We haven't really heard any new news. There hasn't really been anything progressing. So I do think uh, in some ways these clips can maybe give us some insight into what's going on with Reckless a little bit, maybe what the future has in store for him, um, because obviously he is a very, very hot commodity, a very, very big name, and, and something that a lot of fans and people are going to care about uh, what's going on with him. Uh, and a lot of these stories have kind of blown up uh, each in their own unique and different ways. Uh, so I did want to go over all of this. He's also been posting a lot on YouTube and stuff recently. His socials are overall doing pretty well, um, but obviously his main focus and main goal is going to be on this offseason and trying to find a way back into the LEC. So here's the first clip that I wanted to go over. This has really been blown up. A lot of people have been talking about this one. Reckless opens up about Carlos being his enemy in G2. Now, this is kind of interesting because obviously we can assume that Reckless was not happy about the situation, you know, being in, in contract jail or contract prison or whatever, um, ending up uh, getting sold off for, for a buyout and stuff, them not letting him out of his contract, all that, um, and also not letting him play. I mean, that sucks if they're like, hey, you can't play for us. And you can't go play for anybody else either unless they're going to pass like I, I think 500000 or something around there was what K Corp ended up paying for his buyout, um, which is obviously an amount of money that most teams aren't going to be able to buy or, or aren't going to be able to spend or, or just won't spend, especially with the sheer amount of 80 carry talent in Europe right now. It's just probably the deepest position in the region. Um but we still had heard Carlos come out and say, like, uh, hey, you know, he really respects how Reckless had handled the whole situation. We saw uh, Reckless and G2 putting out some content before he left, like all that kind of stuff. So we weren't exactly sure how the relationship was. Again, you could assume that Reckless wasn't happy, but, um, you know, maybe he understood that that's the business side or the situation or whatever. I don't exactly know. Um, but obviously, this title doesn't really paint things in too good of a picture. So let's see what Reckless has to say about Carlos, especially after Carlos has, uh, you know, some drama and stuff going around recently. I guess one <clears throat> really important thing that I want to mention as well before we drop it completely. Yeah, I know this year will also be much better than last year because K Corp actually don't want me any harm. You know, like the vibes are good. There are nothing. There's nothing weird going on which there was for sure with Carlos. Like, I don't think either of us really wanted the other one to... Like, I didn't want them to get money for me, and uh, I'm sure they didn't want to let me go to whichever team I wanted. I mean, I know that for a fact. They didn't want to let me go to any team I wanted. So, for sure, last year was a situation where we were enemies. And I don't feel that way at all with K-Corp. They have always treated me really well, and I think that will continue regardless if we work together or not. So, so I, I do think that that's actually pretty spicy and pretty interesting. And what some people are taking from that as well is that it sounds like, at least to some people, and I, I could see how you could make this assumption. I don't know if this is 100% true or not, but it does sound like Reckless was potentially blocked from going to an LEC team that did want him. Now, who could that have been? Could that have been, uh, you know, a team like Mad Lions or, or, or like, uh, I, I don't know, Rogue or one of these other teams? I, I don't know. It sounds very, very possible, but it sounds like he says, I know for a fact they didn't want me to go to any team I wanted. So it sounds like he might have gotten blocked to some teams, which is pretty crazy and obviously sucks at the end of the day for, for Reckless fans and the LEC and stuff like that. Um, it is absolutely really, really cool to hear, even from the K Corp perspective, that K Corp does seem to be treating their players well. Even if they decide, hey, we want to move on from Reckless. We want to get somebody else. We want to go in another direction. That's totally fine. Those decisions are going to have to be made. That's not personal. It's business, that type of stuff. Um, but that is kind of interesting that he says, yes, me and Carlos were enemies. I didn't want him to get any money from me. He didn't want me to go where I, I wanted to. Uh, and it's just, you know, yet another person in the scene kind of speaking bad about Carlos uh, and, and Reckless just kind of, you know, really not happy with the G2 situation at all, but also saying, hey, K Corp treated me well. They're probably going to let me go wherever I want to go. So 
so that is good. So hopefully some teams show some interest in Reckless, because I do, and I know everyone wants to see him back in the LEC. I also thought this is funny as well. Reckless reveals that he used to mute his G2 players in the LEC. They would try to gain advantage through mental advantage through chat. That's kind of funny. Um, also, speaking on the whole G2 situation, this is pretty funny as well. Reckless, like I said, he's been posting a lot of videos. I think it's really, really cool that he's been posting, uh, you know, his live viewing of Worlds. And these videos are doing good. You know, he's getting 60, 141, 70, uh, 67, 168, 68. Like a lot of views on the Worlds stuff. And I think that's really, really good that he's helping uh, grow the LOL esports side with some of this content. And he's doing well for himself. You know, he just passed 300,000 subscribers on YouTube. But here, this was the first video he had posted about Worlds. And it was also a banger. He says, my former team gets canyon gapped. Now, I don't think Reckless makes his own titles and thumbnails and all that stuff. Obviously, his YouTube channel is probably run by somebody else. But that is still absolutely hilarious. Obviously, he didn't change it or anything like that. They kind of left it up. I mean, they might have came up with that title together or whatever. Um, but they, just him, again, taking another shot at G2. You can just tell he's really, really not happy with how the whole G2 situation went down. Uh, and it sucks because, you know, in a lot of ways, I'm sure he regrets leaving Fnatic. Oh, I know he doesn't regret leaving Fnatic because he says like, hey, it made a lot of sense. I had to take a chance. I had to go do it. But it's just like, damn, you know, he ended up in a really shitty situation, uh, probably surrounded by people who definitely didn't have his best interest in mind. Um, but this was funny, you know, him getting to see uh, G2 getting canyon gapped at Worlds. Here's another clip I want to talk about, though. Reckless wants to stay in K Corp if they want him. Obviously, there have been a lot of rumors going around about how K Corp doesn't want Reckless. And that's even what he talked about in the last clip that, hey, even if they don't want me, that's okay. They still don't have any like hatred or we're not enemies or anything like that. Um, so let's see what he has to say about this whole thing about, uh, you know, his situation right now headed into this offseason. I would love to send you. Actually, for me, everything is simple, really simple, yeah? I would love to stay in K Corp. But if they don't want me to stay, I obviously have to go somewhere else. And then I would love for that to be Europe. That's it. That's how simple it is. So he explains his whole uh, off-season decision-making process for us there, saying that he wants to stay in K-Corp, and if not, he wants to stay in Europe. But he also is not saying, like, you know, I have to stay in Europe or anything like that. It sounds like, and you know, I think a lot of our assumption is that he wants to get back to the highest level. He wants to be competing for titles. He wants to be competing for world spots, all that kind of stuff. So that does make me wonder if he would consider LCS offers or if LCS teams are going to be interested in him. Obviously, it's kind of at a bad time where LCS teams are probably going to be going more domestic. They're going to be going for less imports. They're going to be spending less money, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it sounds like Reckless might end up in a situation where he's at least a little bit desperate and trying to come back. So, uh, Obviously, it sucks. You know, he's saying he does want to stay in K Corp. It seems like he his whole plan was to get to the LEC with K Corp. Um, and obviously, K Corp's trying to get to the LEC, but it seems like they're interested in getting there without him, which sucks because it would have been this really, really cool come up story of them all rising up together. And I, I'm not totally sure why they even want to get rid of him at the end of the day. Um, but this offseason is going to be interesting for Reckless because, like I said, AD carry very, very deep in Europe. There's a lot of teams who have been very, very successful with good AD carries. Even a lot of the bad teams have very, very strong AD carries. Um, so we'll have to see and a lot of the worst teams are probably going to want to take chances on cheaper or, or younger AD carries rather than going with somebody like Reckless um, but I do still think Reckless at his best is you know one of the best AD carries in in Europe one of the best AD carries in the West and potentially one of the best AD carries in the world again 2021 spring he literally won MVP and that was uh you know the last year that we've seen him in the LEC and in 2021 summer I don't think he was bad at all uh and obviously this last year in the ERLs it's kind of been hard to um evaluate him all that much because he's playing against ERL players he's playing with ERL players um so I don't know it is pretty rough but I still do think Reckless has the potential to be very very good I think he deserves to be on an LC or LEC roster. Um, obviously, like he says, I want to be in K Corp. I want to be in Europe. But again, if K Corp won't have him, and maybe if Europe won't have him, maybe we could potentially see him in the LCS as well. But I really do think he should probably end up on one of the 10 LEC teams. Um, it just might not be the best situation or best team or best roster in the world for him. Um, but at least it'll give him a chance to prove himself again to maybe start working his way back up the ladder, um, which I think would be in the best interest of him. And the LEC in general, again, very, very popular player, big brand, really attractive to brands and sponsorships and all that stuff. Uh, and I think he raises the level of play in the league, which is good for everyone involved. But 
That is pretty much everybody's video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you did enjoy. I would appreciate that so, so much. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about anything we talked about in this video today. Subscribe to today and all my latest content. Hopefully, catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.